But there's also something going on that I find very concerning, to say the least. And I'll be looking into this more when I go to Iowa uh, tomorrow. Apparently, uh, in Iowa and, New- and Nevada, they're using an app. They're using an app to transmit results caucus by caucus. With less than two weeks until Iowans line up to cast the first votes to pick a Democratic presidential nominee, party officials are reassuring voters that a new app used to report its caucus votes is secure. It's not clear if they are correct. The app will be used in the key caucus states of Iowa and Nevada by caucus managers, local registered Democrats who sign up to organize and run the process in each precinct to expedite the process, calculate, and assign delegates, and report results back quickly. The app will also be used in satellite voting locations across the country. What could go wrong, right? But questions about the app remain unanswered, including who developed it and whether it has been subject to independent security testing. Security experts say that the app is a potential target for early election interference, particularly since it is downloaded on to the personal phones of caucus managers. Oh, my God. Party officials say operational security presents them from disclosing specifics about the app. Oh, my Lord. This is this is like basically the United States government, essentially since killing John F. Kennedy. Jen, if you're watching, knows all about this. She's a at, she's addicted to the JFK conspiracy theories. Um, but they just classify what they want to hide and then say, well, we can't, we can't, can't unclassify it. We can't reveal that information. Sources and methods, it will give the enemy, you know, a leg up. So we can't reveal the information. This is the same exact thing. We can't tell you who's developing the app because for security purposes. So I'm going to be honest with you. I've been running around like a dog all day. Jen has looked into this extensively. So let's get Jen, the co-founder of Status Coup, on the phone. I just want to let you know, Jen, I'm going to Iowa tomorrow. So I made a call. I I made a call and I I spoke with an activist on the ground there who's kind of in the know, volunteer on Bernie's campaign, has been kind of feeding me information the last few weeks. So even though I'm not there, I'm in the know. Well, he said just last night, just last night, they did a test run, uh, like a test caucus, obviously not a real one, but um, mm-hmm. he said among, me, among the several people there, not the app did not work for any of them. Wow. Five days, yeah. five days before Iowa, the app that the Democratic, not the DNC, but the local state party of Iowa is right. using to transmit results is, was not working uh, for, I believe, a couple dozen people who were in attendance last night. So could you break down for the audience, uh, like, you know, for dummies, why are they using this app? Is it the first time they're using this app? And what are the uh, red flags you're seeing in your research and reporting with this app? Sure. So as Jordan mentioned, we're going to get more into this, especially when when he's on the ground. Um, What I can tell you about this app so far is that it is brand new. So Iowa, obviously, with, with the caucuses, what they have are precinct captains. So in the past, the precinct captains would make phone calls, and it would involve a lot of complicated math. Um, they would make phone calls to call into the state party to report results from that precinct. So that's kind of how it worked before. In 2016, however, Microsoft developed an app that they used uh, um, and reportedly 95% of precincts uh, actually reported their results through this app and it worked a lot faster. They were able to report results within four hours, so it kind of sped things up. So in 2016, they actually announced this this kind of partnership and this app with Microsoft uh, well in advance. So it was pretty transparent. Uh, the security was, was kind of transparent, you know, as much as it could be. The developer, again, Microsoft was transparent. So they used that. And I need to dig into this more, but Bernie's campaign actually expressed some uh, concerns about that back then in 2016. Um, but that's what they used. That's, that's how things went in 2016. Obviously, we know um, and I believe that Bernie actually won Iowa, but that's a story for another day. 
Now, here we are in 2020. They have announced that Iowa, and actually Nevada as well, um, they're using a new mobile app. This time, they have not announced who the developer is, uh, who the vendor is at all. They have not announced the security um, protocols or, or vendors surrounding that either. So it is not transparent this time at all. Uh, this app is not used for voting. So again, this is a, a caucus. So the precinct captains will download this app to their personal phones. Their pers you know, you might be watching this on your, uh, your phone right now. They're gonna, these precinct captains, these Democratic Party activists is essentially what they are, are download downloading this new app which we do not know who the vendor is, we don't know who has made this, we don't know who is in charge of the security surrounding this app, they're downloading it to their personal phones. So the, the party precincts, or the, uh, the precinct captains will use this app that they've downloaded to report the results kind of in real time from the caucus sites. And Jordan just reported that they've, they're kind of testing this app right now um, it was previously reported uh, through the AP and others that the app was not going to be sent to precinct chairs until just before the caucus. So it seems like that has started to happen now. Um, but before that, there's no real testing done at these sites or by these precinct chairs. So they, they enter the data into this app, send it to the state headquarters. The data is then used to announce the unofficial winners of the caucus. The official, in quote, winners are not announced or fully certified until they're done through paper records. But really, as we all know, once the data starts to come in, <laughs> that's really um, that's really the ball game there. So this information is used to eliminate candidates along the way and and all that. We'll get in later reporting. We'll get into the full kind of caucus um, scenario because it does get very confusing, and we all need a refresher um, every election season. Um, so the Democratic Party officials say that they're taking security precautions. We don't know exactly what they are, but they assure us that there are backups and that if there are any errors, that they're, you know, they basically say, oh, yeah, we're on top of this. We've got this no matter what happens. They've also, these Iowa Party officials say they have worked with a technical team at the national level of the DNC to vet developers and design security protocols. Oh, so they've worked at the DNC. I feel better about yeah, this. Right? Don't you feel better already? It gets it gets better and better. So they have also conducted some app simulations and training ahead of time. Like I'm the, not with the um, the actual people who are going to be using these this app, but with Iowa officials to kind of um, get a feel for things beforehand. And they have done this through the Belfer Center at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. This will become important in a bit. So remember that the Belfer Center at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. So they're doing app simulations and training. This is what they did beforehand. They actually did not specify that they are doing, were doing these simulations and training with this specific app. <laughs> they said with an app. So um, I, that's really unclear reporting there um, from these officials. Uh, several people have spoken out that our, our election security experts, um, cybersecurity, digital security experts, they've spoken out against this app because nobody knows anything about it. Nobody knows who the vendor is, who the developers are, and anything could happen. There could be malware on personal phones. There could be you know, spying software or, or something, you know, anything like that on these personal phones. There could be malware on the servers where this app is stored to, for download. Um, hackers could enter in at any time. And even even if no hackers get in or, or you know, are able to penetrate these systems, there could be an issue of, of system overload. So there could be glitches. So I want to, I, I want to, I want to just, clarify it for the audience because I sp sure. see a few comments. This app is not for actual voters to, to select their candidate. It's for right. it's for communicating to the state party the results. So yes, exactly. but but somebody said, oh, so it's only for communications. Well, yes and no. Technically, it's to communicate the results. 
but it really opens up the possibility of the results being hacked, the results being altered, if not hacked. And frankly, to me, I always start with common sense, right? If Microsoft did it in 2016, I'm not a big fan of Bill Gates for a lot of reasons, but you would think Microsoft knows how to do the tech thing. Why did they switch to another company, but they won't tell us who the company was? So if there were these... Well, you know, it could, it, to be clear, it could still be Microsoft. We just don't know. I, I think it's probably not still them. Well, if it was still Microsoft, there wouldn't be any news articles about it. There wouldn't be any hubbubaloo about it. They would just do it behind the scenes like they did in 2016. They wouldn't have to make announcements. Am I wrong? Well, I think people would still want to know, you know, did Microsoft develop this new app? You know, so I I think that's neither here nor there. We just don't know who did it. And to me, the biggest issue here is, number one, there's no accountability. So... Even if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, all right, it's not, you know, Hillary Clinton in her basement with her private server controlling this, just saying, um, we don't know who the developer is. We don't know who the developer's funding comes from. We don't know if the developer of this app has other, uh, other has, has done other uh, services or products for the Democratic Party, for certain candidates. We don't know if the developer of this app is uh, part of NGP Van, who has basically a monopoly on uh, voter files and voter, you know, voting systems around this country. I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but the bottom line is there is no transparency on who is developing this app in Iowa and and Nevada. It's it's Nevada also. So yeah. what? And when the Democratic Party of Iowa, when asked, won't explain who it is, and they say, well, we don't want to say who because it could give hackers or this and that a leg up to look into that company or developers the way they do things. I mean, that just doesn't pass the smell test to me. I mean, hackers don't particularly need to know who the developer is to figure out how to hack it. Am I I wrong? No, I think you're absolutely right. I I think, you know, in their eyes and the eyes of these, the the DNC, who is uh, overseeing this, or at least coordinating with this, and then the um, Iowa Democratic uh, Party state officials, they seem to think that this is a plausible explanation or reason. I I agree that it does not pass the smell test at all, and also, you know, and, and experts agree as well. You know, there are election security experts who are up in arms over this, just out of fear that... Some anything could go wrong, but this could really mess with the results. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.